Hello, good evening to you. You're live here on TV3, time for News at 10. Top stories of the day this evening. Cabinet has decided to postpone the one-month ban on all fishing activities in Ghana, which was expected to start August 7, 2018, to next year. The Minister of Fisheries and Aquaculture Development, Elizabeth Na Afolekwe, made this known Friday evening at a meeting with stakeholders in the fisheries industry. The ban, which would have taken effect from August 7 to September 4, 2018, will now be, imp be implemented in 2019, according to the minister. And President Kufuado has charged media practitioners not to sacrifice the future and integrity of the nation in their quest to grab the juicy headlines that break the news. Speaking at the 12th Congregation of the Ghana Institute of Journalism, the president urged media owners to invest in their staff to improve standards. Well, we start off now as Cabinet has decided to postpone the one-month ban on all fishing activities in the country, which was expected to start August 7, 2018, to next year. The Minister of Fisheries and Aquaculture Development, Elizabeth Na Afolekwe, is said to have made this known Friday evening at a meeting with stakeholders in the fisheries industry in Accra. The minister said the ban, which would have come into force from August 7 to September 4, 2018, will now be implemented in 2019. The minister is said to have urged operators in the sector to prepare and be ready to comply in August 2019. According to ministry, government decided to postpone the ban following the concerns the players in the industry raised. With, with who? Now let's stay on this issue further. We are joined on the phone lines by Professor Dennis Wolano Aheto. Hello, good evening, and thanks for joining us. He's a director at the Center for Coastal Management at the University of Cape Coast. Good evening, Prof. I hope you can hear me. Yes, good evening. I can hear you very well. So tell us, and good are evening you, to your listeners. Thank you. Are, are you surprised about this move and sudden change in government's actions? Well, uh, it comes at uh, mixed feelings, with some mixed feelings. However, I think that uh, one of the critical issues that was raised uh, as part of the consultations that went around across the coastal uh, regions was that of um, not so much consultation at the level of the fishermen and fishing groups, especially at the level of the association. And so I believe that uh, this news, in as much as it comes with mixed feelings, especially also for those of us who are scientists, I believe that by and large, it, we should receive it as a welcome news. Primarily because when we talk about fisheries management, is one, I mean, for us to achieve the goals of effective fisheries management programming, it is important for us to have a voluntary compliance to the regulations, as opposed to one that we follow stringent enforcement, because that comes at a very huge cost especially for uh, the complex sector of fisheries, as we've all come to know. Now you uh, said on, the, on the flip side, mm -hmm. I, I believe that in as much as it's a difficult decision, I believe also on the part of government, because they went ahead, the minister went ahead and announced this, uh, obviously for good reasons, to sustain our fisheries for, for the future and for, of course, also for the present generation. Uh, it's one that we welcomed it as a scientist, uh, because it, it's virtually something that she did in order to uh, follow the regulation as enshrined uh, in the Fisheries Act and, of course, the Fisheries Management Plan. And we believe that, uh, well, it, it's really mixed feelings at this point, uh, but we just wait and see how it goes. You say, for those of you, for scientifically, there, there are mixed feelings. In that mm. sense of things, is it a good move by government, scientifically? Well, I, well I'll, I'll put it as not so much of a good news, but I believe that, uh, as I mentioned, you know, science is something that you cannot change. Hmm. Hmm. You know, once the results are pointing to uh, the fact that the stocks have declined and the fact that we need to take an urgent action, 
uh, I think that by and large, those of us who are scientists uh, that have looked into the fishery stock uh, situation, we felt that uh, the decision of government was good. But then you see, on the flip side, uh, the stakeholding processes that led to the announcement should have also been one that, uh, even though it was broad-based, the fishermen had actually said that they were not fully prepared. Some of them had gone for loans ahead of the, uh, the, the fishing season. Some of them had actually prepared so well. So I think from that perspective, I, I believe that uh, it's one that we can see that this announcement of the close season for the first time in this country brought the discussions of fisheries management to the fore. Mm. So I think that we should take this as a good news for now because then it brings inclusiveness in decision making for the future. But I think that I also would want to uh, use this platform to say that I, I wish to propose that we, we need to have a, a calendar of close season for this country mm -hmm. where it's not just for 2019, but 2018 and also, sorry, uh, 2019, 2020, 2021, okay. at least a minimum of three years, we should have a calendar of our close season which is bad, we should be backed by science so that we can follow through the process in a way that everybody gets on board. So, so having said that, what, what would you propose and what would you say is the short and long term implications for this move by government? I mean, short, in the short term, it may be encouraging, but in the long term, is it going to be that encouraging? In the long term, it's not going to be that encouraging. But then, um, as I mentioned, it provides us an opportunity to really get closer to the fishers, and then, of course, also the fishers getting closer to, to the policymakers with the support of the scientists so that we can work together to make sure that in 2019, perhaps we may even be talking about having a three-month closing in, in, instead of one. Because the truth of the matter is that even for the one-month closing, it is not enough. Because this is the period where uh, there is excessive fishing pressure, especially during the, the peak spawning period. And when that happens, we are virtually collapsing the stock. So what we are saying from the perspective of the science is that the August month alone is not enough because when the fish spawn, you, we would require about six months to a year for them to reach their maturity. They get recruited into the system over a period of six to, to a year. And so within that period, between July and September, this is where we have the recruitment into the fishery. Uh, the young ones are getting recruited into the fishery. So if we do not adopt illegal fishing practices this, uh, around this period and even uh, the period following uh, September, then we will allow the young ones to grow to maturity and then they will be ready for harvesting in the subsequent year. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that we are hoping for in as much as uh, this news has been approved by cabinet and eventually announced by the minister this evening. We should all take it as it is uh, and try to make sure that, especially on the part of the fishers, not to engage in illegal fishing. As a matter of fact, we have initiated some research work in collaboration with the Sustainable Fisheries Management Project, talking about the University of Cape Coast mm. Department of Fisheries so, and Aquatic so, Science. So with the research and you've undertaken... and today, we've been sampling across some of the coastal towns. Mm. I can tell you that the fishers whom we spoke to went to sea and they came back with nothing. To the extent that some of them even said that, well, they, they welcome the close season. Mm -hmm. So even among the fishers, there is complete dissentment as mm -hmm. to whether they should go for it or they shouldn't go for it. So scientifically, but when, them, when... when you speak with the fishers, they can tell you that, look, the point is that we are not getting, we are not getting what we used to get 20 years ago because the stock biomass has completely gone down. So I, I think that the good thing that the announcement of the close season has done is that for the first time in this country, fisheries management has come to the fore, where everybody, not just the fishermen, but also the consumers, the, 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 those that are not even directly into fisheries, are discussing this across the country. And I think that is good for fisheries management. We should commend the, the ministry for this bold step that it has taken. But I would also advise that we should sustain the discussion into next year. Let's have a calendar of close season mm. where we are able to perhaps also look at the possibility of extending. Not extending just, the period to what, about three big, months, month, you're suggesting? Three months, mm. a minimum of three months, so that we can also couple that with, uh, uh, how do you call it, uh, not enforcement, but uh, uh, 
the fishers should not use any form of illegal, illegal, fishing, illegal fishing. Uh, methods in, in catching the fish. So Thanks these so are some of Thanks. the initial thoughts that I would like to share. Certainly. I think that we should welcome the news and then uh, use the opportunity to mm. bring everybody together. And I'm happy that, uh, at least for what mm. I, I heard and what yeah. I read this evening, uh, this decision was announced by the minister Certainly. at La Palm where yes, uh, yes. most of the we, we actually is talking about the, the trawlers, yes. the artisanal, and also the inshore boat association. We have to end it. We have to. Unfortunately, we have to end it. Coming that mm. next year and even beyond, we should be looking at close season because it's enshrined in our law. But we, I think we need a strong political mm. will to carry this through. Certainly, your, your point has been has been made quite clear. An extended period of three months. You're suggesting. Grateful for for your time this evening. Let's take a look at some other news. As a timetable on the referenda for the creation of new regions will be released in the next one or two weeks. This was revealed by the Deputy Commissioner of the Electoral Commission, Dr. Bosman Eric Asari, in his first public interview after being sworn into office. He is, however, not sure it can happen in September as expected. In terms of initial observations, I would say w there's a lot, of, a lot of work that must be done. And I believed uh, your viewers and your listeners uh, heard the president when he, he laid out some of the activities that must be done. I know there's supposed to be a referenda in some regions, not in all the parts of the country. That one is there. And apart from that, uh, there was a high court decision that the Electoral Commission must come up with a roadmap for the implementation of ROPA. So looking at it from that perspective, this year a lot of things are supposed to take place. And I believe that the members of the Commission as well as the staff of the Commission, they are enthusiastic about doing something which will project the image of our country. So talking about the uh, conducting a referenda uh, towards the creation of new regions and the district assembly election, that will be probably next year. But I think the immediate one would be the creation of new regions. A lot of time has already been spent and um, the minister in charge of regional reorganization was talking about likely having these regions created by September this year. How are you people uh, going to raise against time to be on schedule? Let me say that four new commissioners have just joined the block and we are looking at these issues. I know within, within maybe the next one or two weeks, we should be able to come up with a timetable. But one thing which is very certain is that I'm very optimistic that at, by the end of the year, this will be done. But when you look at the arrangement, the requirement of the law, etc., we need to ensure that it is done within this particular year. We have till December, almost four or five months for the year to end. So I think we have enough time to be able to put our houses in order, to be able to put the necessary structures in place. And once the state is highly supportive of it, I don't see why we will not be able to deliver. Maybe we may not be able to meet the deadline of September, but what is very certain is that it will be done. Meanwhile, Dr. Bosman Asari has admitted there is much work to be done in rebuilding the public trust and confidence in the Electoral Commission. He, however, assured Guineans that his team is poised to do all it takes to restore the image of the Commission. The AC uh, has been involved in so many controversies in recent time. The image, I can say, that has not been the best as far as public confidence is concerned. What are you and your team going to do as a matter of urgency in trying to rebuild public confidence in this institution? We know that EC has gone through a lot of problems. Some of them, uh, generally, it has not been very, very good. But I think that we are well poised. We understand the challenges ahead. We appreciate the opportunities that have been given to us. And I know moving forward, we are going to ensure that the EC continues to be the brand that is highly attractive, that becomes a center of lesson drawing for other state institutions to look up to. Most people have a lot of confidence in you people because of the objectivity you have demonstrated in your private work. What do you see as a possible challenge in the discharge of your duty to the best of your abilities? No, I'm not, I'm, personally, I'm not anticipating any serious 
challenge. I think as a commission, what we are committed to doing is that to run a system that is very fair, that is transparent, that will ensure that the voters are those who are going to decide. Elections is not about theory. Elections is more about practice. We are going to do it in such a way that what the people will choose will be at the end of the day or the individuals they will select will become those who will be leading our country at the district level, at the parliamentary level in that manner. So I think that the team, the commission is highly committed to ensuring that we do that and uh, with that, I know we are going to do a lot of work for our country. On that note, we wrap up news at 10 this evening. Thanks so much for watching. Visit our website. It's 3news.com for some more news. I'm Natalie Ford. Enjoy the rest of your evening.